dependencies and slower dependencies uh, working with arrays. So I prepared some uh, scripts that you can try later, but I'm going to display the main concepts and I'm going to give some examples. Okay. Um, we have been talking about these uh, slow stops since we changed this uh, this new system here with deliver. So uh, this is my first approach with Ceron in, in my learning lab. So uh, the the motivation to do this is because I'm building pipelines using the uh, Ceron Arrays nested. So the idea is to parallelize uh, my my process in order to make it fast in the server. So here I'm giving a brief explanation about how to understand the concepts of a slurm dependency and a slurm array dependency. So uh, I'm not going to dig too much because there are things that we have been in previous talks, uh, even we, we, uh, some of us, including me. And for example, uh, I just want to, 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 to show this, that is a, a brief introduction to job array some joint dependencies. We know that that the job array is the recommended uh, way to submit a lot of jobs in the server using uh, a label or an option uh, that is called array. So uh, this, uh, this array option uh, that is available in Slurm uh, can be set up uh, in different ways, but the important thing here is that we know that we are catching an index or we are creating an array index to to track uh, each one of the jobs that we are parallelizing. So the usual way to use it is uh, with this label, uh, this uh, array and the number of jobs that we are going to, to process in parallel. And for example, in this in this uh, label, we are saying that we want uh, 10 jobs in the array. So the, the first job has an index zero, like is uh, set up here. And the last one is nine, but we can also make different. We can use, um, let's say, custom index. Uh, even we can like use, for example, as the odd uh, numbers or or pay numbers. The important thing here is that we need to use this label if we want to cache the index number. So we need to parse the the ID in order to use it like a dependency. Now the job dependency. On the other hand, is a particular job that is going to be launched after the previous job was successfully completed. Uh, so that means that we need um, in a design prepared or or before it, the, the jobs were before prepared in order to say how the dependencies is going to flow. So Slurm provides uh, uh, an option that is called dependency that is used to, to say to the system uh, what is the condition that needs to be completed in order to run the jobs. Okay, now we can, we can submit, uh, for example, a job this way. We have used it a lot of times in the server. Uh, for example, we say S batch, the command S batch, and we usually, uh, we can like, uh, like a like a launch a job, but with this sentence that is parsable, is the sentence that say to the command that we want to cache the job ID that is assigned in the server. So with this job ID, we can say here that we want to run uh, this other second job after the job ID that we cache in the first line uh, was completed because I'm using uh, a type of a type of of job that is called after okay, that means that I need that the first job was successfully completed, and then if it happens, the second job is going to run. So this is the most uh, basic way to do it: is cache the ID uh, with a parsable sentence, and then uh, condition the sentence with the dependency label to say the dependency is after okay. This job that is here uh, is completed. So it's very important to take into account this label because uh, if you didn't catch the, if you just try to 
to launch a job and you didn't say that you want to parse the ID, you are not going to cache the number to 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 let the condition to be evaluated. Does this does this go into um is this just from the the, um, the command line or does this does this go into your bash script in itself? Both. I'm going okay. to show you an example. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, in both. Just I'm now uh, explaining like the concept. The, just the concept. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And then we are going to see some scripts that are in, in bash scripts okay, and great. also in interactive way. Awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, so now we know that we have the, the S bash directives. We have two options that is parsable to parse the ID of the array or, or the job ID. And also we have different kind of types of job that we can run. And this is what is all the condition. So what kind of conditions are the more popular is after okay. That means that first that the first job runs, then I can run the second job. There is also other conditions that you need to take into account like after not okay, for example, the job crashes, so I need to run another job to, to do something. Well, there are also another kind of jobs like after any, that means that for example, if I have, a, let's say an array of five, of five tasks and just uh, one was successfully completed, so this is the one was completed, so I can run the next job. So the design is very important when we are designing this kind of of, of of workflows. Now, we also to, we also need to take into account that since this version, as long has another option that is called after core. The after core is different to dependency uh, to dependency after okay. That is this one is the usual one because after okay parse a job ID, but after core parse a job ID array. It means that uh, you need to decide what kind of task you want to process. So what this, what this is super particular is because uh, here, if we have an array uh, of five um, or five tasks, so we have uh, five job IDs. And these five job IDs need to be successfully completed before to run the second or the, or the third job uh, that we are thinking to launch. So now we have uh, three different ways to mix the information. Uh, so basically the important labels here to remember is that we need to parse the job ID or the job array ID. And we have a dependency that say to the, that say to the, to the system, uh, what kind of type I want to run after to be completed, after to not be completed, or after any of the arrays be completed. And also I need to say that if I have an array, I need an after correlation that is going to run after the job ID uh, be complemented with the second job, job array ID that we have. I'm going to present some examples, no worries. Now, Conceptually, this is what happened. In this figure, we have, let's say, uh, we have a script. And this script uh, creates a file with a header, a simple file. So what I usually do is to create uh, a job uh, that runs uh, the script zero. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the script, the job zero. And for this job, for this, but this job uh, is going to have um, an input that is the different targets that I need to complement. For example, for this uh, array, array target names, I'm going to show here what is array target names. I have uh, five different number of files. So what I'm going to say to the to the job array is that um, I'm going to build a job array a job array of five jobs that is going to be managed for the for the system. So the five tasks is going to run in parallel. This is the first case, and in the second case, I have another script. But this script 
is is independent of the job IA because this script needs to have a file with a header that is what those the first job and then I'm going to add uh, lines to the preexisting files. So I need the first run this job and create five job uh, an array of five, of five indexes and then. I'm going to run this second in order to add lines to the preexisting files. So this is a job array nested with what dependency. Now, uh, this is another uh, another kind of design. For example, I have the same job array that create uh, they create uh, an index of five files with a header. Then I need to add lines to the preexisting files, but I need to launch a third job that is going to add numbers to the end of the of the first file that was created. So here there are important questions to answer. One is how what is the way that I need to, de to nest the jobs? For example, if in the first job I'm creating a file with headers and I decide to launch the second job that is going to add lines. And then after this finish, I run the third job that add numbers to the end, I'm going to get a file like this one. If I cut the file, I'm going to have, uh, this is the header for file one. I'm going to add two lines of a string, and then I'm going to add numbers at the end. So it means that A is a, dep that a, is a dependency of B. And when these both were complete successfully, I'm going to launch C. So in this case, you are always to have the same design and the outputs are going to be always similar. It's going to be the, basically the same. But what happens if in your design, you have this persisting file, and then you decide to launch the job B or job one or job two. Remember that in job one, we have strings and in job two, we have numbers. So uh, the design is that if I have A, a is a dependency of B or A is a dependency of C. So the outputs that you are going to have are going to be different because if the job array with the index one finish first, are you going to have this design? But suppose that the jobs finish in different times, so I can have a different arrangements because can be launched first this this uh this kind of, of design. So I'm going to have the header, numbers, and then the strings. So the designs matters a lot here. Because if you don't decide well how you want to trigger the arrays, you can have different outputs. So this is the most important part, the decide the, about the design. Now, how we parse this information? Well, vamos, let's see first the most uh, the most easier uh, scenario. For example, a job array dependency that is nested. Uh, let's say that here I'm going to create five text files and I'm going to add lines to them. So first I have this job zero. Let's go back here. The job zero is a is a uh, as long uh, job uh, as long script. Let's say that what we usually have seen in previous uh, in previous R star clubs, I add an input that is the array target names that I show you that has five five names to to the to create the files, and then the important level here, oh, sorry. the important level here here is that I'm going to launch. I'm just going to launch the first job, the first script. What is the first script? It's, a, it's an R job that, sorry. Yes, I'm going to launch the first script. And the first script just create a file in the system. So I'm going to cache an array index that has different file index to create this, and then, with the after core sentence, I'm going to run an array, an array index again that is going to add lines to the existing files. 
but after this, this index be completed. So this is the sentence that we repeated here. Array AID is catching the index, and after this index is um, is completed, I'm going to run the job one. In the job one, what has is another script, and this script, what it's doing is running another different script. This is the script one that is going to add lines to the pre-existing file. Now, let's see an example. For example, here, Uh, I'm here in the in the index, so I'm going to run, for example, uh, the job one dependency one. Let's see the one. Okay, here I'm linking the the first and second jobs that I show you. So I'm catching here the job array zero that create the files, and then I'm running the second job that is a dependency. So let's run it here. Job one dependency. Where now is pending, is the one. Job one dependency. Let's. See that I don't have any. Well, why we have resources to go in this sample, I'm going to explain that the, this, this arrangement is just to, to complement the dependency. The, 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 where I have the job A completed, I'm going to launch the job B, just for that. But now, if I want to, to launch the job C, I need to add something here because this way I'm not catching the array ID. So remember that to cache the array ID, we need to add this label again in order to cache the ID of the second job array. So this is basically what we do to the previous sentence that we have built. Uh, we have the, we parse the job array with one to five files. And this is a dependency of the job array A, that is this one. And then I want to launch the job one, but I'm going to cache the job array ID here. And with this job array ID here, I'm going to condition the second job, that is this one. So I can run this uh, after the two previous files have been completed. So let's go back to see if it's running now. Okay. So you can see here, let me explain a little bit output. 
Here we have the job dependency one running. Yes? Uh, here, if this is the one. And then it's going to create uh, five job array IDs. That these are these two files. Is job zero with the index one, with the index two, with the index three, four, and five. And then after this is completed this task, I'm going to run the job one. So the job one is going to create it and it's a dependency of the job zero. So it's going to create another job array with five indexes. It's job one with index one, two, three, four, and five. Now in the output, if we go back here. We have the five files created. So let's keep an eye to the files. So now we have created uh, five different files. The first files has a header and has two lines, okay? Now I'm going to create the same, but I'm going to add the third job. The third job is a condition of the first job, and the first job is a condition of the job zero. So let's see how it's going to do that. I'm going to delete all these jobs again, all these files, sorry. And let's do it again. So now I have a new file to do this. Maybe it's this I have a, a script that is job dependency too. Let's do see. So in this one is what I showed previously. I have a, I have an array ID here that is parsing the, the job IDs. And then I condition this task to the complement of the job, job array ID in order to run the second job. And then I catch in the, the array ID here. And then I use this job array ID to condition the run of the third job, the this job two. So next we run in again. Okay, is this one. Now it's called a uh, job dependency, job two with two dependencies. So let's see what happened. The job two dependencies is creating first five jobs. That is for the job zero. After this is completed, it's going to run the job one. Yes, that is running now. It's not going to run job two. Uh, I'll say uh, job two is going to run after this is finished. Let's see. Uh, job two, job one, uh, here, finish. And then after this job one finish, it jo is running job two that now is complete. So let's see the output. Mm. We have again the files. Let's keep an eye to them. Mm. And now we have, uh, I'm going to take a look. Well, for example, this one, if the job four, the job four, the job four has two still lines, and then at the end has a line with numbers. And then start the job five, the job five has two, two strings, and then add uh, some lines of numbers. So that's the, uh, that's basically the, the flow. This is the job one, for example, with the two lines and the strings of numbers. And at the end, I'm catching again the number of files in order to see that the information is not missed. So that is the flow. We have uh, we have jobs in, in different scripts. And the jobs that are in different scripts are catching depending on the design of the pipeline. If we need uh, a race nested or just we need to cast the job ID or the full task, it's something that needs to be very well thinking. And depending on that, we are going to use uh, the dependency, the type of dependency that we want to use. Okay, after not okay, after core, after any. And we are going to cast the number of the variables in order to make a condition to run the next file. Uh, well, to finish, 
And then I'm going to answer some questions if, if you have doubts. Here, I left some, some samples of how this works. For example, this is a case that has not a, a ray ID. It's just a file that needs to be launched after another job. So here, I don't need the after four uh, label because these are, uh, these are just uh, simple jobs that are that not mix an array ID. So we have here the job one, I cache the number here, and then uh, I make a condition, and this condition is going to be run. Uh, if successfully, it's going to run the job two. So it's, it's the design. Here we have another design, for example, I need the job one and job two run independently. And then I need to condition the detail job run after one and two be completed. So I need a different arrangement. I need to cast the job ID one that is associated to job one. I need to cast the job ID two. And then I need to be the double condition. I need the after, okay, both jobs can run the job three. So this is another kind of design. Now, if we have, if we want to, to run job array dependencies recursively, we need a different kind of arrangement. For example, I need to run these two jobs independently. And after this be successfully completed, I run job three. And then if this is successfully completed, I run uh, job four and then job five and, and so on. So what is the, what, what are the commands to do this? I need to use the after core sentence if I have a uh, job array job array ID indexes. So let's say that the job one and two are independent. So I need to cache these in two different variables. And then like the number three, it has two conditions. I need to build a different kind of sentence that is going to parse the array IDs after correlation and the after correlation of the array ID one and the array ID two. So if this is successfully completed, I'm going to, to launch the job three. And I'm going to cache the ID in the variable three, the array ID three. And then uh, after the variable three be completed, uh, I'm going to parse the ID and I'm going to launch the job four. So I'm going to catch it here. And like this is the last job, I don't need uh, to cache any other variable. So I'm just going to evaluate the condition of the array ID four to launch the job five, and I don't need to cache any other variable. And, um, and well, at the end, you have another examples. I have not tested one. This is the one that I'm building now for my own jobs. But uh, you have some, some ideas on how to go with that. Uh, so that's that's all that I have for you. Uh, if you have questions, please. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually have one. Mm -hmm. um, um, so job dependency is is it is it is it, is it waiting for a file to be done um, from the previous? Um, script or is it or is it just searching the history for that job i guess that's what it's doing right okay. it's searching the the history for that job id that you give it or that um job name that you give it right yeah and then says wait for that to be done right yeah the 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 close the the option what those is that it's going to parse an environment variable that is built in the in okay. the in the, in the Let's see, for example, here. Here, uh, we have a, uh, the first job is in solution. Okay, let's say that for example, I have this, this job is the first one. Mm -hmm. It's the first one that I launched. So I have an ID, this, this ID is an environment. It's a variable that is in the environment, in mm -hmm. the floor. So it's going to cut the history if the 
task was completed successfully and it's going to return zero or one. The usual way that- it's So it'll, it just sort of looks for that state variable there and, yeah. and then says like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's parsing the state of the variable and it's building a variable for each one of the dependencies that we have. Do you know how long, I guess it might depend on how the system's set up, but do you know how long they, they stick around? Either what, sorry? Do you know how long they stick around in history? Uh, Not really, but I read the, the, the minimum, the, the maximum number to parse is 1,000. But I'm not sure if this is just in a batch or just if the full uh, task that you are submitting. Right. I'm not sure. As far as I understand, in terms of time, by default, the configuration is set up so that if you search for a specific job, mm -hmm. then it's, um, I don't think there's a time limit. Um, okay. If you just run like that's a count, then it will do from the start of the day. But I think what's relevant for this is unlimited time. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess the reason I was asking you is uh, one of the scripts that we run is is when we get new data from the sequencing core, um, we transfer it to um, new locations. We set we set the permissions for those files, and then we back them up on it on a different disk. Um, so I was wondering, like, if I could run like the permissions and the um, back up at two different times, but I guess I would just run them at the same time, right? And then just, just tell the other one to wait for the first one to finish. I think the UPN set up times. Yeah. I have seen labels where the people is doing something with that, but I should not try it. I really okay. don't. I don't know if you know something. Well, that sounds like a typical case of this, right? Where you're waiting for one thing to finish. Yeah, but I was, I was wondering like, Say say I ran it right. Uh, say I ran the the permission script like days ago, but I but I didn't run the the backup script for some reason. Yeah. Like you know, I just forgot. Um, like if I run it days later and yeah. it's already completed. Yeah, I mean, I I assume that it's using as account, in which case it will definitely find it days later. Uh, I haven't found the job that has. Okay. I'm pretty sure the default settings are like unlimited time, but okay. Um, I know that you can configure Slurm in all sorts of ways. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we're human, right? Sometimes we just forget to do things. So. And maybe, we, for example, I have I have been experienced that when that when some job fails, for example, for some case, yeah, I'm not receiving the 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 message, you know. So, for example, the flow of the pipeline, I need to add parameters to cache that. Specific cases, for example, like I I build in job array or file to build an object, for example, a server object, and then in one of these objects, I'm going to ask at the chromatin information, and in some case, this phase or something, uh, the system is going to continue with the other files. It's going to continue with one, two. It's going to jump three because fails, and it's going to continue with four and five. So the only way that I have to track this is when I count the number of outputs in the jobs, in the logs, and I see that there is a difference in the logs. So I can see and compare. I'm building some kind of a script that made that automatically in order to not be dragging in each one. But with the difference, I can catch that something was missing uh, because the information is in the log. So we need like to, to set up very well the label. For example, here. Doesn't oh. this handle that though? Like, doesn't this only work once the job completes successfully? Yeah. Well, well if, with after okay, I guess, right? With after okay, depending on the label that you are using. But uh, well, for example, here, uh, here, uh, I, if I have, for example, uh, let's just see this. Um, I have here a uh, job array that is going to to build uh, five indexes, yes? So like I'm using after core label, I'm going to have an index for each one of the of the indexes of the array. So it's going to parse the okay in each one of the indexes, not independently. So oh, okay. yeah, you got it? Yeah. So, if, so I can continue the flow of the pipeline with the job array indexes that were successfully completed. Uh, okay. 
and the center, the only one that fails is the only one that is going to be like a yeah yeah depleted from the from the workflow. Okay. So what I now trying to do is to identify the, the differences. Yeah. So I usually count in loss in order to to see the difference. And when I detect that in the workflow there is a difference, I see the loss the the loss and I see oh okay that one fails for some. Is what I doing now? What can be more efficient here? I don't think they would have a setting for that specific case. Like mm -hmm. maybe not after core or after okay, but maybe. I would think they would have one that would handle that. That seems like a common thing. But I mean, obviously you've looked into it more than I have, so I don't know. But... Yeah, here here now, at, at least what I can I do is to build, for example, a serial object, then add the chromatin information and make some plots. Yeah, but this is our job array ID dependency of the first job that is going to take the previous errors in order to add layers. Like, Logics, and then it's going to make a statistics of that information, so I can have everything, and I can track the information. So it looks like something that is running well because it's parallelizing the jobs, so I can like cut the information. But needs to, I think that I need to work a bit more with the labels in order to track the information that fails, not the the, the one that is successfully completed. The, the the trick is in the information that fails that you need to catch that. Mostly, somebody will need to work. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, so, so I guess th this only works with. I mean, this this works. I said only works. This works with. Um, with S batch, right? Um, I guess there's no way to okay. So when I get again, when I, when I for my use case, when when I get stuff from the core, um, they just give me like a Globus like transfer thing to do, right? Um, I guess there's no way to like make my like permission scripts, which is the first one that I run afterwards, wait until that transfer is complete. Right? I imagine not with, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you might have to have some some custom code to detect like whether a file is present. I know there's like Chrome jobs or whatever they're called. I don't know, it might get complicated. <laughs> it's probably possible. Just just wait for it to progress my minute. Just, cur just curious if there was if there was a way to like, you know, Maybe not check to see if like, I guess files were getting larger still or something like that or yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, well, anytime that you want to keep an eye anyway, because I, I'm still working on it, uh, you can clone these files that I put here, and you can try it. The important one is the job one dependency. That just is the basic way to build a job array ID and do something else The job array IDs. It's a nested way. And in the second one is uh, basically uh, the same, but with three different links. And so this is just a case of dependencies. And what I can see is just an array you know, log or logical operation. So be careful to make it uh, correct. And that's all. That. And is this GitHub repo? Um, yeah. Is it available somewhere? Or? Yeah, yeah, I share. In the, oh, the, yeah. I'm sharing the channel now. There are the club. OK. Yeah, Thank you. In the so oh, is, it, is it public or is it? Yeah, it's public. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's all, guys.